Okay, so I'm going to try to avoid to talk too much about our inks. The goal of my presentation is to give you some insight how you have to tune inks in relation to your print system and your application. Do we have to do it like this? Okay. Very short introduction to ACFA. ACFA is an imaging company. We stopped consumer imaging a long time ago. We focus on professional imaging, either in healthcare, either in graphics. I am from graphics department. And when you look to what they do, they do a lot of stuff, printing, printing plates and graphic film, etc. But for Injet, there are two important parts we do. In sign and display, we bring full solutions, meaning ACFA systems, using, of course, existing print ads, but basically all the rest we do ourselves. It's uh, ACFA integration, it's software, and it's UV ink made by ACFA. Now, by doing that, we learned a lot on UVs. And for that reason, we said, OK, let's go also to the industrial world, because this is a very interesting one. And UV ink can be important, as well as other type of inks, of course. But we are using that know-how of knowing how to integrate an ink to the system and the application to develop specific industrial inks. And I'm going to tell you a bit on how you can do that. So, but we do much more than ink development. Uh, we, we try to be a partner in an industrial environment. Uh, and on Imprint Show in November, this will be our key message, your partner to integrate print and manufacturing. Now, coming to the subject, and maybe some others already told you it's a system. Um, so you're trying to find an ink or an ink set and you're trying to formulate it according to many different requirements at the same time. That's the complication. So uh, what is your production process? Is it an existing one which where there was no printing or you play, replace analog or it's hybrid? It's analog plus your inkjet or it's disruptive. Suddenly two or three steps are out of the process because you print with inkjet inside that process. So that's a very important denominator in uh, how you need to develop your system and your ink. Next to all the other questions, I will give you later an example of a button company who used to buy rolls of label and now suddenly is printing. How do they do that? They're not used to handling or managing the print file. So by doing that, many things change for the, the people who are responsible for printing. We hear a lot about single pass, and I'm also a believer in single pass. But multi-pass also has its existence in industrial printing. When we look to the customer base, which buy an ACFA system today, okay, they make some money with doing the sign and display, but it's a very mature market. The price per square meter has gone down drastically. How do they make money? They print also industrial. One to maybe tens only, but their system is very well suited to handle the material, and there are different ink sets available according to application. So it's not impossible to do with um, white format. Of course, when you're going to high output, inline integration, then often you have to do single pass. Keep in mind that the investment level could be quite different. Okay, now an interesting one. At the end, you will be successful if the economics are okay. Huh? You can bring a perfect print solution and make one print and everybody's happy, but at the end you're not selling ink or your customer is not using ink. He will do if he has a real market case. Everybody knows the curves of traditional printing the more you print, the cheaper it gets, and it levels off. And you typically have high run lengths. And in some applications, you have no short run. It's only long run. So where is the inject case? So typically, that is the line that people draw for inject. It's not really 100% true. When you go to very low volumes, it's also not a stable line. It's also more costly. But OK, let's suppose it's correct. I deliberately draw it higher than the level you have with a high, really high um, run length or number of pieces with analog printing. But 
where is the story? Something that was not demand, or people said we cannot do that, or we don't want to do it, it's too difficult technically, it's too expensive, suddenly you can do that with Inchat. Is the price then that important? It will always be much cheaper than traditional printing. So there is a first one. Huh? But if you really want to go to production, every cent that you can make your total inject solution cheaper in running cost huh, per piece or per square meter, you will do more with inject. Luckily, there is a trend that you have much more different variations on a certain product. So the, sh the, short, the shorter the run length gets for a specific print, hmm? and with no change over time, etc. So there is a direction towards lower run lengths. Okay, coming from the environment, what are you doing as an ink developer? Of course, everybody has standard things, but in industrial there are so many applications. And it's very important that when you're looking to, as, as a customer, an end user, or, or a, a packaging company, or an integrator who wants to do this, to find a new solution for a specific application, you want to be sure that you have an ink partner who thinks with you. And you're working actually to a full solution with all those people. And so it's important to understand what is the right technology, what is the right ink, which type of ink, which curing, are we going for LED or bulb, if it's UV, etc. And of course, each specific application has a specific functional specification. So that's what you do in a partnership. And as an ink developer, the more you have of this list, the more you can do, and the more a partner you can be for your customer. Um, let's take the first one, fast screening of ink formulations. We have robots in-house that during the night do 300 different formulations every day. Not only make the formulation, also test the basic values of that ink performance. So the next morning, our people have an Excel table with all the results on their desk. And they can do the next trial. So you can screen very fast all kinds of ratios of products. There's already one tool. Right? Pigment dispersion technology is key. Many people already touched this, this conference. I'm not going into detail, but basically, if you have a good dispersion, you can have a good end quality of the ink. If you have a bad dispersion, stop. You cannot make a good ink of it anymore. It's crucial almost to every parameter of your end result of your ink. The raw materials, there is a selection on the market. Not everything is commercially available, so sometimes you can decide work together with a supplier or develop yourself when you have a specific need for a specific compound. Ink formulation. Huh? And ink formulation is not just about how much should I use of every compound. It's also the way to optimize your patent performance, the functional specifications, and especially that you always have the same result. So you don't want the peak optimum. You want a broad optimum that even if you have a small change in the concentration of the compound, you still have the same result. Batch to batch consistency is linked to that. Huh? We control many parameters on every batch. Ink production, yeah. the, the better you are equipped for a small scale to a big scale, the easier it is to work with your customer and, and grow with him in volume. Okay, um, this is also no surprise. Injecting is key in, in how your system works. Huh? Uh, the print system, there are a lot of stuff you can tell about that. In the end, it's all about reliability. We don't want one good print, we want the same print quality always, over the full width, at the maximum speed. Huh? So, part of this is the reliability of the jetting, which we focus very strongly. Open head time, jetting stability, print head maintenance, as low as possible. Huh? Having a printer starting at 6 o'clock in the morning, doing zero maintenance until 10 o'clock in the evening. No purge, nothing. Open head time during lunchtime, whatever. They do not print all the time. But there is, of course, the second part. And you don't have to see them separately. They are not. You cannot just tune the ink. Okay, now I have a jettable ink. Now I'm going to do the next step. It doesn't work like that. 
What you do is look to all these things at the same time. Otherwise, you're going to spend a hell of a time jettable in or not tune it or not, it's not jettable anymore, back and forth. So you need to cover all at once. So image quality, the specific end user's request for that specific application. So image quality uh, sometimes is easy, depends on, on everything. But end users, and it's good that you have simulation methods so that you can know in the lab already, do I have a chance to meet the functional specs before you show it to your customer? So you can do a lot of adhesion testing, solvent testing, uh, weathering chambers, uh, before you, you say to yourself and to your customer, look, we have a candidate. Uh, well, that's what you do. I'm not going to go into details in all these tools that you use during the development, but going to look for the functional application is a very important one. And now I'm going to you go into the drop. Huh? I'm going to look into the formulation, um, a general representation, very schematic. Huh? I'm a chemist, but I'm not doing chemistry much anymore, so I can do it like this. Huh? Uh, so what's inside your picolito drop? So we have a color. And when you would look to a bag of pigment, you would say, is that going to be my ink? Ooh, looks dirty. So there is, of course, a very important trick in making your dispersion. Uh, the key of how you do the surface treatment, the polymeric desperant, how you make that, and in which uh, carrier, etc. There's so many parameters on that already. So suppose you have that. So going to UV ink, what you want, you want a curable ink. So it's a free radical ink. You have the monomers, or you represent very schematic. Typically, it's a mixture of several, uh, two to six different monomers. You have photo initiates, typically also a mix. Huh? You want either LED or one bulb or both, so you play with mixtures. And that together make that if you put UV light on, you get a cured layer, a plastic cured layer. And you have a lot of important additives who also are crucial to stabilize the ink wetting, adhesion, and, and other additives to make the functionality of your ink. Okay, now looking to an application, that you think, oh, is that important? Yes, it is. You don't know how many times a day you touch something with this marked encoding. Maybe 100 times a day you have a product in your hand. They're all marked encoded. Every, every wire, every tube, every box is coded. It's a lot of ink. And it's all inkjet. Not all, there is some laser or some other. But it's basically every type of ink technology, every type of printhead technology. So why should you use UV? Well, there is a trend to use UV more and more, specifically for LED. You want simple systems, easy on the market. We have customers that have tube factories that have 30 lines on each line. There is such a coder that immediately during the production code every single part of tube that's coming out. So what you need is reliability in a very dirty, dusty environment. All is the same result. Open head time should be a year. Huh? You need everything as reliable. You need solvent scratches. There is no pretreatment, so you need good adhesion by your ink. It needs to cure very fast. It's not an easy application, but the result with UV ink is, can be extremely good. By the way, uh, some expert in industry wrote a white paper on this. You can freely download that on the website. It's not an actual paper. It's about this market and the applications and the trends. Okay, now, thinking back about my drop of ink, what do we have to do to make it a good marking and coding ink? I have to do several things. First of all, it's mostly black. I want a nice, dark, intense, neutral black, not something grayish. So, first of all, you're going to play with your pigment and your dispersion to make your color strength by your pigment dispersion. Okay, what next you want? If it's a barcode, QR code, it needs to be sharp. It's all about ink wet. So actually, additives for your promotion of adhesion with a no pretreatment, there is no ink receiving layer. There is just the material as it is. So the spreading of the ink, the adhesion to that, you do that a lot by the additives. Of course, every compound is important, but here your additives is a big uh, play field where you can tune your ink. Okay, going to a next application, product printing. So. You print during somewhere of the production of that product, huh? and it's part of the product in the end. It's not an advertisement like a sign display. No, 
you print to is functional to the end result. Right? The panel display of a washing machine is the best example I can give. Used to be all pad printing is changing to inkjet for economic reasons. So what need you ink to do? So again, a lot of this is UV ink for adhesion, for industrial reliability, always the same result. Print on a material as it is, maybe a pretreatment for best adhesion possible. That is, you can pay for that in this application. Huh? So here you print on, on the surface, huh? direct to shape, when it's with the format. And now we come to something important. Whatever that shape is, the complexity is growing strongly with the, with the type of product. So if you go to something easy, you print on something with X, Y, so you just go over it with the printer and you print and that's it. You print one face. Huh? And you maybe print all the same, or if you do some variation. But the more you go to the right side, the more difficult it gets for several reasons. The workflow, the ink substrate interaction, it needs to be reliable if the output typically goes up. Huh? When you go to the right side, think about uh, margarine cup. It's a discontinuous shape, and you need to print that in one run. Huh? You move the object under the printhead, and you want the same quality everywhere. So you understand it's all about complexity of that application. So one factor inside this, which even makes it more complicated, it's when it's a food packaging. So suppose it's a yogurt cup, it's a, a, a drinking um, PT bottle, a pouch, whatever, different materials. So that's what we, we're just working very hard on. But pharmaceutical packaging is also very interested in this technology, especially because of the serialization. There will be legislation everywhere soon uh, that you will have to print on each single bag a separate code and not on the batch, which is currently done today. So there is a big driver. Uh, the blister foil packaging for pharmaceutical already is strongly an injured, but many more to come. Again, they're even much more sensitive to migration because it can be a fluid that's going directly into your veins. Huh? So there is a lot of legislative stuff here, because what can happen? There can happen a lot which can contaminate the food or the pharmaceutical, but the two main things that can happen is either migration through the substrate or set off. Typically invisible, because it's not a pigment which is transferred. It's some other products of the ink which are transferred. You don't see it typically. Uh, but they can be dangerous because they are transferred to the inner side, which is later the food contact side. That's the risk, depending on the application. Uh, so for each application, you have to ask yourself, what can happen and what do we have to do? So coming to that ink drop, how does that look like? Again, the same schematics. Uh, of course, you need color. You want to build an image. But now coming to that ink, the message here is everything is important. You cannot make a low migration by changing one or two compounds. No, it's a conceptual design. The reason being that the legislation is very clear. You have actually low migration ink is, is not a good term. We use it, everybody knows it, but there is not such a thing as a low migration ink. What there is, is a food safe packaging that exists of a low migration ink, a substrate, a printer with a curing, and a specific food type. So what do the analytical labs do? They give you a certificate to the printing company for this combination, that specific combination, and say, that's a food safe print. And that's what we have to look for. So that's one thing. So your ink, your inks, your compounds need to be on the Swiss list, soon the German list maybe, huh? if they finally get through a final version. GMP produced, meaning Good manufacturing practice, meaning no contamination. So you cannot make a standard UV ink together with a low migration ink. Then it gets contaminated. And there are many other local guidelines, plastic directives, directives etc., uh, FDA, heavy metals. Well, you have to comply with that, but that's not enough. You have to comply with the print system and the specific food packaging application. And then you can have a certification. By saying that, you have an application on all your ink formulation compounds. Because you want a very good curing degree, 
one thing. And secondly, you want low migration. Because once it's good cured, there still can be migration of small degradation compounds or non bundled photoinitiators or whatever. So what we have designed in our ink is a highly reactive low viscous monomer. Low viscous because you need to jet it. But it's a very special monomer which does not react as a normal acrylate that, that all, everybody else is using. And diffusion hindered photoinitiators. Diffusion hindered means that there are oligomeric, polymeric, polymerizable combinations thereof, meaning that they not easily migrate the They're stuck into the cured layer. Even the additives are all important. Even the pigments should be food grade. Huh? So a very schematic presentation. What is happening? This is the liquid ink. You have monomers, you have photonicates in our very basic representation. So in the liquid ink, you have them all together. Now, what happens if you put UV light on it? We get a chaining, a linking of all those products. So even the photo initiators are now inside your network. And that's different with a standard UV. Mostly your photo initiators are not linked. Not all the monomers are linked. Some of them are not reacted, are still there in your cured layer, unreacted, small molecules, easy migratable or set off. That is the difference. We have a conceptual low migration in and something which is tweaked. Okay, now where is it used for? You can use it in label, you can use it in pharma, like the blister packaging. We have been focusing very strongly with these partners who are market leaders in their world of a specific uh, application of food packaging. And they have developed specific systems for production printing, not for sampling. The KHS one is 36,000 bottles an hour. Polytype, the new one, is 130 cups a minute. SACMI, the closure caps, is 36,000 an hour. And these are not maximum speeds, that's today. Huh? Now, the famous Belgium beer case, which is on the play, display on my boot, and I have a paper this, this, uh, describing how it's made, how, how everything is important of that specific case. So that's the first system in Belgium that is from this company is using. They're printing character, the faces of characters of a TV show, a Belgium TV show. And when you have two bottles and you have the application download, they talk to each other. So we call it the talking bottles. So everything in that project is important. It's production printing. Who is printing? The beer, the, the beer maker. So. It's one of the most in innovative beer makers in Europe. He is, he is blowing himself the PT bottles. He's putting a coating inside so that the beer has a longer shelf life. Then he prints, and a bit later he fills. But he is also making a model of selling the printed bottles for other companies. So suddenly he has two business models, not only selling beer, and he's promoting the PET. Huh? It's light, doesn't break. This is 33 centiliter in this small bottle. Huh? So he has a, a full value to propose to the market. And he used this company who developed this, this application, our ink, KHS who built the system. It's a total solution approach. And that's a bit my message here today. Developing that ink, that was not easy. It's low migration, it's recyclable, it's adhesion without pretreatment, uh, it's flexibility, all that together. I can tell you it took some time to develop that ink. But one of the more complex where you have every gradation of the difficulty. But you can be successful. It's possible. So in conclusion, <coughs> it's a full system approach. Don't forget the ink. Don't make your system and then come ask for ink. Please do before you start so that we can tweak together and find a solution. Um, so into the print system, into the application. I think I showed you in a few examples. And UV curable, it cannot do everything, but it's a strong one in real industrial print. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>